Good evening. I'm Guillermo de Cervantes uh, of the Kingdom of Trimeris. And I am, uh, I've been in the SCA now for, I think, about eight or nine years. Uh, I reside in the Shire of Southkeep. Today, we're going to be doing a uh, introductory class on demos and how to run a demo. Um, we've been blessed in South Keep in that we've had uh, two venues that we've been uh, able to do demos regularly. Uh, annually, we have a demo at our local Supercon. Uh, we also have a historical landmark, uh, which is a Spanish monastery uh, that was brought over from Spain piece brick by brick and rebuilt uh, here in Miami. And, uh, and uh, being able to do demos there once every three months on average. Um, and that's, it's wonderful to be in, in such a historical, beautiful venue when we're, when we're doing the thing. And uh, it's, it's quite an experience. And you're all welcome to join us. So I'm going to switch over to my PowerPoint. As we get started. Uh, just to get started, um, I want to share my contact information with you. Um, so if you have a paper and pencil handy, uh, my, uh, my name, Guillermo de Cervantes, uh, I'm going to share these PowerPoints uh, with you um, at the end of the uh, day. Uh, but my my phone number, if you need to reach me, is 786-385-5993. <clears throat> That's 786-385-5993. My email address is my mundane name, Richard dot Sullivan two number two at VA dot GOV. That's Richard dot Sullivan two at VA dot GOV. That's uh, my Monday name. Uh, so if you need to reach me, if you have any questions, I'm always available to assist. Uh, so the goal of this is to give you some some uh, guidance on what's expected from uh, from uh, uh, the SCA for demos, but also some best practices that have helped us do the thing here in Miami or South Key. So the first thing to start off with, we have in chivalry, there are virtues and in demos, I find that there are virtues that help us get through it. Diplomacy is crucial because you have a relationship with the venue um, and, and, with, and you want that to be a long-term relationship if you want to continue doing demos with that venue. And so being able to know what to say and how to say it, being able to have a bit of self-control and, uh, and, and being able to articulate uh, uh, the, what, who, what the SCA is and, and to uh, have, a, have not just a business relationship, but a kind of a relaxed relationship if possible with the venue. Uh, and those participating, the coordinators of that venue, it, it, it can be a long-term relationship. And so having diplomacy is crucial. Patience is, is equally so. Uh, things come up, things go wrong, things happen. Uh, people don't show up. Uh, uh, there's always going to be something that's going to be challenging. And being able to keep your cool, uh, being able to wait your turn, uh, being able to be patient uh, while you're waiting. Right now, we're we're registering with the Supercon uh, here in Miami for July. The venue uh, uh, coordinators are not focused on Miami at this time. They're focusing on Chicago. So they have me waiting for two weeks while they're focusing on Chicago to finalize and approve us uh, to participate. And so I have to wait 
And that's what patience is all about, is being able to chill until the time comes. Showmanship is a big deal. You know, we when people come up to our demo tables, when we're uh, doing a combat demo, it's different from fighter practice. It's much more showy. Uh, when we're doing a presentation and a panel discussion and talking about who we are and what we do and why we love the SCA, you know, we want to we want to get people excited. And so being aware of show, showmanship is 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 very key. Now, there are some people in the Shire that are going to be more capable at doing some of this stuff. And so knowing the knowing the people in your barony, your kingdom, your Shire, you know, who who are who are the people that you think are the best examples of the face mm -hmm. of your of the SCA? Uh, those are the people that maybe you want might want to consider uh, putting forward to be the spokespeople. Uh, certainly the ones that have the experience and, and the knowledge of what the SCA expects, things we, we can say and things we can't say. Uh, these, are, these are issues. Grace uh, goes along with diplomacy, you know, being gracious, you know, the saying thank you and please. Uh, uh, you know, get, get being supportive and understanding when things don't work out with a venue, when there are mistakes made. Uh, we were scheduled to do a huge demo at uh, the monastery one year and they got the date wrong and we were all keyed up to go. And that weekend, the whole thing was canceled. And so being able to not get pissed off, being able to yeah. be understanding and and, you know, disappointed, that's fair. But we have to, you know, be gracious with with these people that we're working with so that they want to keep working with us. Flexibility is something that I got from theater. You know, when things go wrong, when we're working, we're, we're working with others and collaborating with collaboration with others, you know, being flexible uh, with change, uh, being able to uh, uh, handle change. You know, if we're too rigid, we can break and we can lose control. You know, it's it's a very stressful experience in some demos. And when things go wrong, as they often do, uh, I think last year we had a, a crisis because the, the uh, panel room that we worked in was on the second floor and the elevators were locked. And all the fighters couldn't get their gear up because the elevators were locked. And it took us a bit of time to coordinate with the convention center to unlock those elevators so we can get up there. And that required grace, required patience, and it required some flexibility to be able to work through it. And, and you sometimes you have people that come to uh, to volunteer that have some ideas that are that are that may be new and uh you know being able to be open to new ideas being able to work with others and collaborate with others these are all very useful uh virtues that help you get through the experience uh so just it's just food for thought and preparation <clears throat> so in courting uh, a, a venue um it could be a, the venue could be a library uh, the venue could be a public school. Uh, it could come from anywhere. They could reach out to you. But if you uh, if you want to reach out to a venue, the initial contact uh, is 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 very very key in how you uh, engage them because they won't know anything about the SCA. You might want to bring some literature uh, and and communicate the mission. Of, of of our not-for-profit. You know, we are here to study and teach historical crafts, whether it's martial arts or it's uh, scribal or uh, paper making or smithing. But these historical crafts, we are about sharing that knowledge with anybody that wants to know it and and helping them understand that mission is 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 very important. And you might bring pictures, you might show them videos of what you've done with other demos. You can email that to them so that they have an idea. They might have questions about the kinds of weapons that we use. 
Um, and so answering their questions and, and, and just guiding them and helping them gain a, a clear understanding of who we are is very important. Uh, you must uh, communicate uh, this. It's it's not a one person deal. It's going to be all the officers, your shire, your barony should be involved. It shouldn't be one person running the show. You should have a team of people involved uh, to help coordinate and and uh, bring things together. And so, you know, once you have a venue identified and you're starting to talk to them. Make sure you're engaging the officers of your local group so everybody can get excited and you can work together as a team. You may require uh, some uh, email to be, inf uh, uh, information might need to be provided, signatures might need to be made depending on the kind of venue we're working from. Uh, some, sometimes the Supercon has asked our Seneschal to sign uh, an agreement uh, for our venue to be able to participate because we're not for profit. Uh, we don't usually, we've never had to pay for uh, a booth. Uh, uh, and the reason for that is because we're it's, in, it's a mutual relationship. And I'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> the courting process can take some cases months. So again, we need to be very patient. We want them to feel comfortable with allowing us to share their space and do the thing in their space. And so we, you know, it might take several phone calls. It might take several visitations. Uh, might take a while to be able to do, create this relationship to, for us to come together. Uh, so, so once it looks like they're serious and we're, we're engaged and it looks like uh, things are happening, the office, main officers of your local group may want to visit the location if they haven't, if they're not familiar with it. It helps in planning uh, to think about well, what's what's the setting like. Where can you do uh, the various uh, things that we do? Uh, where can we set up the fighting? Maybe set up tables for displays. Um, so, uh, when we did the run, when we did our, uh, Mon Spanish monastery demos, uh, our lead officers had to go out and meet, meet them and meet the, meet the venue leaders and get us lay of the land, so to speak. So that's very crucial. <clears throat> Again, it's all about building trust and building a connection between the SCA and the venue that will last. And uh, the mutual relationship, it, I, I say that because it's kind of like, um, what do you say, the clownfish and the anemone? You know, you're both mutually benefiting by, by participating in a demo. They're getting free entertainment. You know, their guests are, are witnessing uh, exciting things and new things. And we get to share and we get to participate and we get to have fun. And so the, the two come together beautifully. Um, and so understanding that it's, a, it's we're both, both the SCA and the venue are both gaining from that relationship. Uh, and most importantly, the purpose of our demo is to add to our, our population. We want more people to join us. Uh, I call this the beginning of the demo season. Uh, Gulf Four is behind us, and now we're looking at uh, several opportunities uh, in the coming months to do demos, whether it's a library or a Comic Con or a historical landmark or a school. This is our opportunity to grow in the ranks. And so uh, we want to try to use this time, uh, you know, to, to, to meet new people teach them who we are and bring them into our events and activities. And we do that through that mutual relationship. <clears throat> so a flyer, making a flyer for your demo. Now, now it's now, now we're, we're, we're in the nitty gritty. We're starting to plan for making this demo to happen. And if you've decided on a date, and you make a flyer for your demo, you would forward that to your uh, kingdom uh, event uh, uh, steward. 
um, deputy uh, so they can put it on the calendar, the kingdom's event deputy. Uh, you might, you would send it to your kingdom uh, newsletter so they can uh, uh, put your flyer and get the word out so everybody knows that this demo is coming. Uh, uh, if you have a Facebook group, uh, Kingdom or a local Facebook group, put it out there. Uh, if you've got a website, use that flyer. You got to advertise, especially if you want to get uh, the volunteers. When do you do this? Well, uh, you know, SCA events can be planned six months in advance. Um, but sometimes venues are complicated. You don't have a lot of that much time. We're in April now. By the end of this month, I think I'll have the confirmation of our SuperCon, which is in July. Uh, so we don't have that six months, you know, but it's but that's just the circumstances. So as soon as I get that uh, official approval, I'll be sending our kingdom yeah. uh, 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 event uh, deputy uh, our, uh, the information and in our newsletter so that they have that information. So the Question. yep. Number two, flyer is required to be added to the Kingdom newsletter in the Tailwinds. I requested that back in December. Didn't happen. And okay. I had a meeting with 12 people in the room when I did that. And I emailed it. Okay. Well, that, but you did your part. You did your due diligence. Um, as I said, things don't always go the way they should. And follow up is key. I should have I should have put follow up as another virtue. <laughs> Diplomatic follow up, you know, giving people a little nudge. Hey, I sent this email. I notice it's not up yet. Can you please help help me out? Um, that you know, but if things don't get done in a timely fashion, uh, we are a volunteer organization, and so that happens. Um, just being understanding and, 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 and supportive. The information I'm sharing uh, is for Trimeris. Uh, please forgive me. I know we have some people from out of kingdom. Uh, I'm sure your kingdom has a similar setup. So uh, it won't be identical, but it should be similar. So uh, what I'm sharing now uh, is, oops, little typo there. <laughs> Uh, recommend to you that you review uh, the SCA demo policy. Uh, I'm going to be discussing some things now. Uh, ac actually, let me stop for a moment. And I'm going to post what we have now for, let's see here. File your computer. I'm going to give you the, the SCA guidance on demos. Okay, if you look in your chat, you should be able to open that up. Just double clicking on the demo policy. This is straight from the SCA. I'm gonna be uh, touching on it. Some of the things that are commented on in that policy. At any demo, you must have at least one paid member to be present and in charge. Um, so uh, membership is done through SCA.org. Uh, usually the officers of your local group are going to be involved with the demo and, and they're required to be uh, uh, members of the SCA. So that's usually an easy one. Uh, waivers are required uh, if you're having any combat included in your demo. Uh, and and to use, uh, you may use a single waiver or a roster waiver. I would recommend a roster waiver. Uh, and uh, if you have multiple days, I would recommend that you use a roster waiver for each day because volunteers can change from day to day. Question. Mm -hmm. Where can I get a copy of said waiver to make copies of yeah. for my demo King next month? On our Kingdom page, uh, they have the waivers. Um, again, I'll, I'll, I can help you with that. Uh, but... Um, 
Again, this is Trimeris. I'm sure this is actually, these, these uh, guidelines are SEA guidelines. We, uh, we live in Trimeris, so I'll be sharing the Trimerian waivers. I'm sure um, it's, it's likely we all use it, similar waivers, if not the same. Yanmo? Yes. Uh, would you also please uh, connect me with the waivers? Because I'd like to be able to view it. Okay, we'll talk I about it. We'll share yeah. that, yes, at another time. Okay. Authorized marshals for whatever form of uh, of combat that's being demoed. So we have armored combat and we have rapier combat. And so if you're doing both, you need to have both. Uh, you'll have to have somebody on hand uh, that's willing to act as a marshal for that ev that event and on on that day. If you're having Question. multiple days. Should if you have one particular marshal that is authorized for both heavy and rapier. That'd be fine. Okay. That'd be fine. Uh, as long as they're, you know, but be mindful that sometimes volunteers aren't able to do, I mean, your event is a single day, but some, some uh, demos are multiple days. And so you might need to I, make sure that if necessary, you you might have to have different people acting as marshal if you have an event that's multiple days. Wouldn't it be difficult to marshal two different uh, sports? No, because you have one usually, at a time? no, because usually a demo you're doing one at a time. Oh, okay. You know, it's not like a tournament where you might have different different things happening at in different places okay demo there's usually just one setting and you'll have armored combat then you'll know, they'll step out then maybe the fencers will step in they're not going to be doing it at the same time okay there we go uh you want to have uh uh, you want to clear ahead of time uh, for for the purpose of rapier combat. You want to make sure that the venue is uh, okay with that. Uh, steel weapons uh, can make people raise an eyebrow. And so uh, this is one of those times where you might need to communicate and even show them that our weapons are tipped. And it's think of think about the idea of orientation. You know, this is helping them understand what the SCA does and how we do it. And uh, and so, but you want to try to, if you can, clear this ahead of time. When we're talking about armor combat, you know, we are use rattan swords. We need to explain that. Um, uh, but uh, you want to, if you can, try to do this ahead of time. There have been several times where at a super con, we're going through the security and they stop us because we have steel steel weapons. Usually they wouldn't allow it, but because we are pre-arranged, because they know who we are, we can call a supervisor down, they can vouch for us, we show that all the weapons are tipped and safe, we work through it. Uh, but it's, again, it's something you wanna, you don't wanna wait to the last minute. Also, no guests can handle steel weapons at any point. And so you wanna make sure if you have your weapons on display, it's behind and out of reach uh, from the uh, from the guests. Never leave your steel weapons unattended. Always have somebody watching. Not just because of uh, uh, of things going missing, obviously, but you know people get when they get holding a sword, they want to swing it, and nobody wants injuries. Safety first. Boundary ropes, as I mentioned uh, earlier, are crucial when we're doing uh, uh, combat demos. It's strongly recommended. Uh, a safe distance away. Uh, sometimes we might need uh, our, our marshals to stand as a boundary uh, between the combatants and the observers. Mm -hmm. uh, the participants of the SCA may not uh, uh, hit a member of the public with any weapon, regardless of whether or not they want it, you know? So so the scenario we're thinking about, hey, put the helmet on, see what it's like. Here, let me show you what it feels like. No, we can't do that. In this venue, we can't do that. A demo is different from practice. In a practice, we might do that, you know, just to help them understand 
what it what it what a shot to the helmet might feel like. But uh, but in a demo, we are, we just can't do that. I see. When demos are uh, uh, including children present, we always have to have a minimum of two unrelated adults around uh, just to make sure everything's on the up and up. Um, children, okay, Le legal What do you mean by two unrelated adults? Well, uh, two, two people in the SCA that don't have a family connection. Okay. Most of us. And other question is, in the demo I'm doing, we're letting children have foam shields and foam swords to play with a knight. Mm -hmm. But if the knight isn't allowed to play with the children, what do we do? Just let them have a shield? Well, it's called beat up the knight, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let them beat up the night. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, the website provided on the bottom is just for extra additional guidance. Um, how to register with a venue? It's gonna it's gonna vary from depending on the venue. Uh, sometimes it's just a word of word an agreement verbal agreement and a handshake. And other times you have to go through a very long uh, registration process. So it could it, it just be prepared uh, that once you're once once the venue is positive and they want you to be involved, uh, just follow their lead. What do we need to do? You know, what is the venue leaders, coordinators? What do we need to do to make this happen? These are logistical uh, challenges that you can just work through with enough time. So with the Supercon, uh, the, uh, we, you want to, once you get an idea of how many uh, volunteers you're going to have, you're going to be asking for a certain number of badges. Uh, and, and I'm having, a, I'm controlling myself because I want to do a movie reference right now. Uh, but having badges, uh, uh, we usually request 20, sometimes uh, uh, 25 badges. Uh, there, uh, that we share with the volunteers to get them in the gate. Um, they're they're not too uh, strict about the badges, uh, and so sometimes we can take off a badge and let somebody else use the badge to allow them to get the badge is the pass to get into the supercon. We don't have to pay for it; it's provided to us. And generally, uh, we want to ask for that in advance uh, so that the badges are ready for us. The day of the event. Awesome. And you may need to do a early registration. Uh, we have uh, three uh, things that we asked for in our demo. Uh, we want to do a combat demo. We want to do a Renaissance dance class. And we want to have uh, panel discussions and classes that we're offering. Um, and so that required us to do three separate uh, entries three separate uh, registrations for each of them. Is there a question? Okay, so uh, in doing that, I communicated with the person that's coordinating uh, the, the Supercon and they confirmed that they received it. Initially, they only received one and I had to redo two until they confirm that they received all three, but that's just part of the process. Um, but most demos don't require that kind of registration. Libraries uh, that are willing to work with the SCA, uh, they might they might have a not-for-profit form. They might require to be signed by your seneschal of your local group. Um, but that's that's really the only issue. We uh, we have a public library here in Miami that lets us teach dance classes and have have a free activities once a month because we're not for profit. And once a year, they have at just ask us to register by filling out this form. Uh, but that's it. So know your venue. What will they allow? How much space are you going to have for your combat demo? Will there be uh, a barrier in place 
so that the guests and, uh, and the audience is at a safe distance. Will they allow you to use uh, steel weapons? These are, these, are, these are important questions you want to try to have well before the event. Classrooms, whether it be classrooms or le lecture space, sometimes uh, the classrooms might be far, far away from where your uh, tables are. And the convention centers are huge. In other cases, uh, we've been in a family zone and they set up an artificial classroom right next to our display table. So it's always going to be a little bit different. Uh, and so you want to try to get a clear idea and understanding ahead of time. Uh, sometimes the venues can provide you with uh, a floor plan uh, to give you an idea of what they're planning. Uh, and then you can share that. Uh, if it's an outside a venue, will they allow tents? Will they allow you to use stakes? Sometimes venues are don't want you to use stakes because they have sprinkler systems and they don't want you to damage their uh, equipment. And uh, will they allow merchanting? You know, so there are merchants that like to come and share what they share their wares. Um, that's that is kind of part of the SEA experience. And, and that's a local decision as well for your shire or your barony, uh, whether or not you want to allow merchanting. Uh, we've never actually done merchanting, um, but uh, if merchants wanted it, we would, you know, we would explore it. I wouldn't recommend something like that at, at a super con, but perhaps in a, in a different venue, like uh, a historical landmark, uh, it might be worth it exploring. Are there any questions in the chat? I'm just no, just, sir. Great. <clears throat> so advertising, advertising, getting the word out. Uh, Facebook has uh, been a, a, a crucial tool. Uh, it's one of the main tools I think we have the SCA use. Um, I think uh, if you have people that are in your in your uh, group that can use Instagram and. TikTok, some maybe some of the youths out there that might be on your team, maybe they can help you get out, get the word out through social media, um, and uh, using flyers, using pictures. Uh, it, it you want to get the word out to your local group, to your kingdom, uh, and and uh, just you want you want to get them out, get the word out, so that number one, you can. Uh, start collecting volunteers, uh, that you need volunteers. And, uh, you know, having volunteers is crucial. Uh, you need to be able to take bathroom breaks, you, you know, uh, at the desk, at the, ta at the display table. You know, you need to have enough people, enough fighters, if you're doing a fighter demo. Uh, I've, done, I've done demos where there were only three or four fighters and we were exhausted by the end of the day. And so the more fighters you have, the more people you have to man the tables to speak up, uh, the better. Uh, and you want to announce to the total kingdom. Why? Because there are peers who will travel the entire kingdom from, from, from end to end to come help and support your demo. Last year, we had uh, a, a car load that came down from, from, from uh, Tallahassee. We are in Miami. That's an eight or out an eight or nine hour drive. But they came and they spent the whole three days with us to to help support. And uh, you know, sometimes the kings and queens will come. You know, see, so, so don't just think small. Don't just think locally. You put the word out for the whole kingdom. You might be surprised who reaches out to you and yeah. wanting to help you with your demo. Yes. So this is the tool that I use, the spreadsheet, to, to monitor and track the volunteers. They're going to tell you what days they're available. Uh, you want to get their phone numbers just to help in the coordination, especially uh, if people are missing or they're not showing up. You know, if you want to coordinate, uh, you might. I, I usually end up using uh, not SCA names, but whatever name they have in Facebook because uh, that's another means of communication with them. Um, so uh, 
by by you you can add an, another space if they're going to teach a class just to make a note um if they're fighters i tend to highlight uh in in yellow any fighters that are involved so i can keep track uh, uh how many fighters we have uh on a given day uh and if they're fencing if they're rapier fighters or if they're armored combat fighters uh, you know, this is a tool that helps you just keep it. It's very simple. It's nothing complicated. Um, but you want to have this as, as your, as your guide, uh, to know who's going to be there on any given day. If it's a multiple day event. Any questions about the, uh, spreadsheet? Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, you can use uh, Messenger uh, at one. Could you just hold just one moment, please? Sorry about that. Hello. Um, so uh, mess, you can open up a Messenger group uh, for your volunteers or uh, for your leaders. A, uh, of the event uh, as a means of direct communication. Uh, this year when we did, uh, I was involved with the Crown at Gulf War. We had an open group, constantly a uh, messenger group, so we could address and troubleshoot anything that came up and communicate uh, what was going on. Uh, so it's very, having a messenger group is a real, real cool tool to use. Uh, Uh, if when on the day of the event, you want to have uh, a co your volunteer list on a clipboard. Uh, if when you have your schedule of activities, you want to have that and multiple copies of that schedule so you can hand it out to anybody that wants it. Uh, and uh, you want to bring the floor plan if it's provided by the venue. Uh, because there are times where you might find you show up to the venue and the floor plan is completely different from what they originally told you. That happened to us last year. And so we must be flexible and understanding and cooperative and 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 just roll with the punches as things go. Uh, just to, but it's good to have it on hand. Uh, so as a point of reference. But these are things that the the leader uh, or the crat or the steward, whatever name you want to use, they should have on hand for the event. Um, helps in coordination. So create an, a, uh, uh, an, a, a, uh, a meeting one week before the, the uh, event. You should have like a Zoom meeting or a Facebook meeting where all the volunteers can come together it helps uh, in orientation, so everybody knows what to expect. It's kind of a Q and A opportunity, um, so that everybody can be on the same page the day of, and everybody's set to go. So some of the things that should be covered is you should have a point of one person is the point of contact, one phone number, anything that comes up, that's the go to person, and everybody should have their phone number. You should confirm that 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 uh, spreadsheet, the volunteer spreadsheet, post it up. Hey, does this look everything look right? Are there any changes? Do we need to delete anybody? Do are you know any changes? Last minute changes? Uh, you can work out in the moment with all the volunteers. Sometimes they might be able to uh, come an extra day. Uh, things happen. Um, so uh, and you want to confirm. Uh, uh, with anybody that doesn't show up to that to this meeting, that that they're okay with their schedule, they they said that they're going to do. You want to make sure that they're going to be able to be there, just because life can be unpredictable. Ain't that the truth? Discuss parking. Um, is there are there going to be parking issues, and uh, and where is the parking? uh is is our you know do people need to carpool are you going to use a a, a u-haul truck and where are you going to store that truck 
you know, some, sometimes we bring a lot of stuff to a demo. You know, we may not. Sure. Work on it. Sorry. Was that a question? Sorry, I didn't realize I wasn't muted. Um, oh. Please ignore me. Not a problem. No. So, uh, so, you know, you, sometimes we might bring our own tables, like wooden tables. We might have woodworkers, you know, uh, you know, and so you, you using a U-Haul truck uh, for some demos is not impossible, but you're going to have to figure out where you're going to put that truck during the demo. So you want to think about those things. Uh, by that time, you should have the layout map. Uh, if the provider uh, has given you uh, a layout map, the venue, that's great. If not, you might want to make one uh, just so people understand and have an idea of where the table is going to be, where's, where is what, where is the fighting combat going to take place. Usually that's all in the same area. Uh, but if not, you want to you want to tell them that. Uh, in our in 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 our demo that we had had last year at the supercon the uh the table uh our tables were literally right across from the combat area but the panel discussions was literally in Timbuktu you had to walk 15 minutes to get to the panel discussion classrooms and so that was something that we had to know ahead of time so uh we'll, I'll get to that in a moment uh, uh early loading uh you know you're gonna have to figure out uh where uh and when are people coming uh some some venues uh will allow you to come in early to set up and what are the rules for that uh that's something that venue will tell you uh you need to you can show up at, you know from this time to this time in a loading dock and get your stuff in uh, you have to respect the boundaries of the venue for that. But this is the time to communicate to the team. If you can come early, these are the rules. And so this Zoom meeting, uh, planning meeting is, is really helpful to get everybody on the same page, uh, all the volunteers on the same page and answer any questions that they might have. And this is usually, if you're doing a fighting uh, demo, you know, who's gonna be the marshal, how many fighters are expected? These kinds of things are, you know, inquiring minds want to know. And uh, also, uh, when when considering your your loading and unloading, uh, having a folding wagon is recommended. Uh, you know, it, it's usually it may be a very long walk from your vehicle to the table, and so being mindful of that, uh, you want to be prepared. Uh, with 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 you know the a wagon to help you get your stuff from here to there. It's just a good idea. <laughs> okay, first day. Uh, and it, this is like before you know demo is gonna start, and you got to get ready. Uh, whoever is your leader, uh, your crat, your steward. Uh, they will need to meet with the venue organizers uh, well before well before the event starts, maybe a, a one or two hours ahead of time. In some cases, you know, three hours, it depends on the situation. You have to collect your badges from the uh, uh, from the uh, event. So you have all the badges. Uh, there might be, uh, you may not get all the badges you were expecting and you might have to contact the organizers and work through that. These are things that do happen. Uh, organizing the where the uh, location of the tables are, where, where you wanna know as a leader, as the coordinator, uh, where everything is because they're gonna come to you and ask you. Where are the classrooms? Where's where's the display tables? Where is the fighting area? You want to get that figured out well before anybody shows up. And so coming early is is very useful so you can be that go-to person. And you want to double check the schedule. Now uh, you don't assume that everything is going to work out. You know what they say when you assume. 
And so uh, once you get to the venue, see what they show as the schedule, cross-reference to what they, what you've agreed upon previously. Uh, so that make sure everything is on, on the up and up. If there are any schedule changes, if there have been any modifications, maybe uh, they can give you more hours, you know, or more demo time. Sometimes they're, they, they, they make mistakes and sometimes they have cancellations. Mm -hmm. There have been times where other, other event, um, other, other performers didn't show up. And so we got extra time to where we were able to go out and do fighting demos. Um, so, so you, but you want to double check to make sure the schedule is what you expect, um, before you, before up front is there a sound system and is the sound system functioning <laughs> these are some basic stuff but it's a good idea just to make sure uh uh and is there a person that you have to work through with the sound system or are you on your own to to manage the sound system uh sometimes there have been times where they've had a staff person on hand and there have been times where there's nobody and we just pick it up and go but uh, you want to know where it is and, and how does it function. Uh, and you have to set up your display tables. Uh, that takes some time. As volunteers come in, they will bring uh, their stuff, which will be maybe part of your display. Every, you know, people bring their devices, their banners. They might bring cool helmets that can sit on a table. Uh, if you have a weapons rack that you can have behind the tables to display all the different kinds of weapons, that's kind of cool. Um, if you have mannequins, uh, you know, for our fiber arts uh, gentles, uh, where you can show dresses or, or garb that have been crafted, yeah, we you can put that on display. So setting up the display, that kind of happens as volunteers start coming in and they start setting them setting it up. Everybody has usually an eye, but you might want to identify somebody in your um, in your group to be the leader uh, and coordinator. Uh, so so everybody it you know can put their stuff up, but it, we want it to look presentable. This is the showmanship part. And so when people walk by, they want us, they want you, we want them to make a double taste, but they, we don't want to have, present something hideous. So ha maybe having a, a, a coordinator of the display tables just to set up and be mindful of what's going on, that might be a good idea. Question. Yes. Who has a display armor or display weapon? holder rack thing who owns one that you know of in the kingdom uh different uh, i i know i have one uh duke midian has has one uh fighters may or may not have it you know uh if they don't have it that's okay you don't need one it's not required it's kind of cool to have one but uh you know uh it's not something that will make or break a display table um, if you, if there isn't one available, you know, just maybe leaning, leaning the weapons against the table so that they can be seen, but again, out of reach. Uh, that's the only thing that we need to make sure we do. Uh, let's see, uh, you want to be mindful of the security, uh, if there is security, uh, at a library, not much in the way of security, but at a super con, it's heavy security. And so that that becomes in becomes an issue when it's time to, you know, as your volunteers arrive, if they come early uh, to set up, then they're they won't have to go through security. Uh, it, you know, like if they have an open early setup from eight o'clock to ten o'clock, for example. But after ten o'clock, if they come, if they come after that, then they might have to go through the whole security gate and they have to inspect their stuff, and that's where things get dicey. Um, so uh, just be aware, and this is again something you would discuss in in your planning meeting. And as volunteers come, 
you need to uh, ex you know understand that they're going to come at different times. You may assign people to be your runners to meet volunteers uh, with the with because they're going to need the badges, and so uh, they're going to call you and say, "Hey, we're here. Where's where do we go?" And so you would send a volunteer to meet with them and provide them a badge so they can get in. And uh, so that's that's just some coordination, but that's why it's best to have one person as the as the uh, contact, the point of contact, so they can let you know when they arrive and you can manage that. Okay, so this is what's in your demo book. Uh, the, this is the information we want to get from uh, anybody that wants to come and join us in the SCA. Uh, it's all pretty straightforward. Uh, we want to know what their interests are. Uh, we want to know how to reach them. And uh, and it's a, not a bad idea to know who they spoke to. You know, if we want to get if if we find that one person is is really working hard at the demo and talking to people, hey, maybe they need a letter to the kingdom because they really worked their ass off at the demo. <laughs> And uh, this is uh, this is information that may not just affect you. It could affect uh, you know at, at larger demos, people can come from other parts of the state. People can come from other parts of the country. And after the demo, you may need to share this information uh, with those other other people, those other baronies, those other kingdoms. Uh, so that's crucial. So let me stop. I'm going to, oh, yeah, I'm going to give you a copy of that. All right. Upload. So this is a one page, uh, that you would find in, for your demo book. Um, that is, so you have that information three times, one, two, three. And you would just photocopy that and uh, maybe uh, maybe 50 copies probably would be enough. And you put it in a binder. Uh, you might, if you have multiple tables, you might want to have two uh, binders. Um, you can use a photo album binder. Uh, just, uh, fill, just have them ready so that as people and you talk to people at the demo and they say, hey, this is great. I want to do it. Great. Go sign the book. And uh, and that gets you go gets them gets us a means of reaching them and connecting with them. Okay. All right. So uh, you might create a display uh, with a QR code. Um, or have a QR code handy uh, that could, that is linked up to perhaps your Facebook page or website for your, your local group. Um, that could be really, really helpful because then they can sign on to your, to your Facebook page and join right there. And then they're immediately connected. So QR codes are really, really cool. Uh, we, we've talked about doing that, but we haven't done it. Hopefully this year we can get that ourselves. You can have business cards or invitation cards to your next local event. So you can tell them uh, the day of your demo, hey, we're going to be meeting for an archery practice next Sunday. You want to come here? This is where it's going to be. So that's really cool. You can have brochures uh, for the SCA. You can have uh, uh, other, other kinds of things. Hold on one second. No, I can't. I can't. Don't see it means I'm muting myself. Hang on. Sorry about that. So brochures uh, for your are provided by the SCA for the national, you know, website. But if you have some uh, local uh, brochures for your Shire, Barony, Canton, it's good to have that on hand as well. So these are just good public relation tools. Uh, so now let's talk about what you can have on in your display space. 
Uh, I would we recommend that you cover all the tables, especially if the tables are provided by the venue. We want to have stylish, stylish tables. So you bring tables, covers, cloth table covers if possible. Uh, uh, displays of your armor, your weapons, your garb, having the banners and pageantry. Uh, I keep a book of all the scrolls that I've received uh, in a photo album. So I'm able to show them uh, what scribal is and uh, as an example. Uh, so uh, that's that's just a suggestion. Oh, no, typer. Sorry about that. Ambiance. Ambiance is a thing in the essay. I'm not ambiance. Sorry. I, <laughs> I didn't catch those. Uh, but being able to cover up uh, the modern stuff, you know, you want you want us to give them a sense of, uh, you know, what the dream's all about. And so try to cover your coolers. If you bring a cooler, uh, it's good to bring a cooler. You got to stay hydrated. And they, and they may allow you to bring that to a venue. But you want to cover them up. Use goblets. Use mugs. Try, to, try not to use soda cans. If you have a person assigned to the tables to keep an eye out, you know, they may... You know, don't let don't leave soda cans on your tables. It, it just takes away from 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 what we're trying to do. So make sure that the tables are clear of any soda cans or water bottles. You know, if you don't have mugs and goblets, just just don't leave it out. Uh, we want to keep the you know be mindful of. We don't want trash. We want to keep the area clean. We're representing the SCA here. <clears throat> You might have an opportunity to actually demonstrate crafting and performing arts. You know, it, the, it, at a certain venues, they may allow you to do classes. They may allow you to, to demonstrate. We have had scribes uh, who were doing their- We have a message. Yep. What's the question? We have used QR codes for Kingdom websites and our Discord, I believe. Wonderful. From Logan, the gardener. Yes, absolutely. In our kingdom, we have uh, some local sites. It might be new to them. Uh, and so we certainly have kingdom uh, QR codes. Uh, we have people that will help you in the kingdom get a QR code for your local group. Uh, that's certainly available. Um, it is It is a really cool tool. So I can get a copy of the QR code to email to my the library for them to print out copies for us. Yeah, or you can, or you can, they, you can print them out yourself. You know, if you if you know somebody in your shire that has access to a printer, you just email them and they can print them out for you. Uh, getting a QR code made for you, the kingdom will help you with that. Uh, you know, just have to create a QR code for your local group. That's all. And can a, our web minister do that? Um, uh, I'm not sure who in the kingdom handle. I know who I will talk to, and I'll talk to you about that separately. But I, I just know. acquired a web minister for our group last Thank week you. fabulous congratulations thank you um, but the can't you you want to connect with the kingdom person to help you create a qr code i think uh, they are kingdom well they're dark water but they were originally chase dragons chase moved to dark or didn't move to dark water but playing with dark water and i talked them into coming back okay okay that's cool but uh, yeah, ask them to reach out to the kingdom to see who the person is that'll help them make a QR code. And if you have a website and if you have a Facebook group, you might want two QR codes for each. Or shoot one me, each. sorry, Guillermo, shoot me a message directly and I'll I'll set you up with the people. This is Logan. Oh, our, okay. Our king, thank you. Long live the oh. king. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Let me send you a message. If you need the QR code, shoot me a message and I will coordinate and get you set up. In Facebook, he is known as Logan. For the record. I got to look that up. Okay. 
Uh, on so, it. so anyway, so in your display area, you may have the opportunity to demonstrate your crafts. You know, maybe there might be somebody sitting there doing fiber arts. There might be somebody sitting there doing scribal arts. That's really cool. You know, if you're talking to somebody and you're and they're interested in performing arts, hey, do Bardic. Hey, you're, I got a song for you. Check this out. You know, and lay it out there. You, you. There's no reason we can't do the thing at a demo. That's how we. That's how we get people hooked. Uh, so whatever your whatever your thing is, be prepared to do it, because uh, uh, that's that 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 excites people. It gets them wanting to join. Um, they must be met, the display tables must be manned at all times. So that's why you have a want to have a good number of volunteers, uh, uh, so that you can rotate. People might need bathroom breaks. You might be mindful of that. Um, sometimes your volunteers might be split up. Maybe you uh, half your volunteers might be off doing a demo in a classroom, and the other half is manning the tables. So uh, you want to you want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to get their personal needs met, and and just be mindful of that. <clears throat> um. Oh. Question. Yeah. How? Um. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to do that now that you mentioned it because I'm running the whole demo so that means i can't be at my table doing my wax seal at the same time if needed to yeah, do if you're, if you're the demo leader you're not going to have time to do the thing because you're going to be the demo leader if you're the point of contact you're going to have to be the you know you're herding cats that's your job uh, you 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 will probably not have any opportunity to sit down and just relax. No, it's not for relaxing. I'm supposed no, to be no. doing wax sealing for the children. And well, then there's somebody else that might need to do that. Uh, because unless somebody's going to take over your take a talk, give them the talking stick, and now they're in charge while you're doing your class, that might be a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Uh, but generally speaking, if you're if you're the leader, if you're the quat or the coordinator, I wouldn't take on anything like that. That requires. I already did not knowing that. No, nope, that's okay. You could work it out. Maybe somebody else can take charge for that hour. Uh, you know, you have time to to plan and coordinate. That's the advantage of of planning ahead and doing this class. Uh, <laughs> Um, remember, desks are not allowed to handle weapons, particularly the steel weapons. Safety first. That's a, that's kind of a thing for us. Um, if space allows, as I mentioned, you might set up a parking lot adjoining with the uh, with your tables for fighters to have their gear uh, and maybe set up in their wagons already. And then I, I would recommend that you try to cover. Uh, their gear just because uh, it can it you know it's just fighter armor and equipment in a wagon is not not that cool not that presentable and so having a nice uh, cover to cover it might be a good idea just because there's so many people walking by <clears throat> okay combat demos combat demos rules we got rules around here and so there's some things you got to know not every oh. demo is going to require a combat demo uh you'll know that in advance you'll work that out in advance as mentioned you have to have a marshal for each combat style that's being presented and we're talking about armored and rapier uh all uh combat volunteers must be authorized for a demo uh, there will not be any authorization testing at a demo. Uh, it should not happen. It should all that should be done well in advance. Uh, and uh, it's recommended that but if you're doing a demo with combat, uh, that you have one person assigned to be your face uh, and in your mouth. Uh, it's good to have an MC that can tell people who we are. This is a uh, uh, Armored combat, where this this particular person is Persian, that particular person is Renaissance. You know what's their thing? What's their fighting style? 
They, this is a tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, they, we're going to show you a tournament style fighting. You know, somebody to to speak to the crowd and 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 get the crowd kind of in, engaged. So they're not just watching. You know, the 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 demos. You're getting an olfactory experience. Uh, remind, remind the fighters that demo fighting is not the same as practice fighting. Demo fighting, showmanship. You know, you might, now we're talking more like, you know, a little bit of like gladiator kind of uh, acting out, you know, getting a little excited and, and shouting and cheering before a battle or after a battle. You know, you want to get, you want to maybe have a character, you have your persona that you're displaying. Uh, you want to, you want to try to act it out a little bit. Uh, you're not really there to try to win the that fight. You're really there to give on a good show. And so uh, be mindful of that. Uh, that you, you might want to hit the shields a little bit more than you normally would just to make noise, to get people engaged and you know people are walking by in some in a supercon for example and they see they hear see these slapping and slamming and that that gets their attention and so uh the showmanship is a thing that we want to be mindful of it's not the same in a fighter practice we're focused we're engaged we're training but in a demo we want to put on a good show there's no reason you can't have a little tournament as part of your demo you know, uh, uh, encourage chivalry, encourage, you know, uh, maybe go out and to the crowd and ask, may I ask a lady, may I fight for your hand? You know, uh, if there's a lady. Oh, that's a cool idea. I never yeah. thought of that. If there, yeah. If, oh. there, if there's a male fighter, if, if there's a female fighter, she can go to a, guy, a dude. Hey, can I fight for your hand? You know, if there's children in the crowd, you know, you're going to cautiously and carefully approach the children and, and say, hey, I'm going to fight for you. Uh, you know that, you know, and, and, and the MC. Can we give them little trinkets if they if their fighter pretendly wins? You plan ahead. You plan ahead. Well, and, that's why I said I already ordered a <clears throat> hundred parchment papers with envelopes, three by five sized with all my seals and extra wax so that I could have an entire wax seal demonstration. Very nice. To show about how royalty sent um, mm -hmm. letters and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I already ordered all that and, and paid for it. And so that's was going to be nice. my children's display thing. But then when you said that because I'm the to-go person, I also have to be able to handle the, I'm thinking, Mm, I can't yeah. be in two places at once. I'm sure you'll work through that. Uh, uh, I mean, you're not going to be alone. There are going to be people around you that's going to support you. I'm sure you'll you'll figure that out. I feel uh, like I just sunk in the deep end of the pool. No, no, you're you're going to get help. I'm sure. Uh, if enough, if you have enough volunteers, there is no reason you can't, and you have enough space. You, oh, I have the space. No, I don't know about volunteers. Here, but right now, I'm talking about the combat demos. If you have enough oh, I have the space. space. If you have enough space at, at, at your venue to do combat demos, there's no reason you can't have a, a small melee, like uh, two fighters against two fighters, three fighters against three fighters. That's always fun, and that it gets people really excited. Uh, so it, it we should... have a very large fighting area. Excellent. Large, and large inside area with two meeting rooms. So. So now we have enough room for 10 10 by 10 pop-ups also. Fabulous. That's wonderful. I so went and scoped it out. I took pictures. I measured. Yeah, I did the whole, that part of it. Great. But then, okay. yeah. So now we're going to talk about a classroom uh, presentation. It's a different, different vibe from what you would do in the, the combat demo. A classroom presentation there you might not do any combat at all if you have a small space you might do a little taste so people get a, an idea but you have to be have enough space so there's safety of course uh, but before you before you do start your presentation you need to identify who's going to lead the conversation who is going to be available to answer the conversation 
One year we had uh, uh, Sir Ari and Sir Daniel Van Hessen and uh, several uh, 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 Duke Median. And we had uh, several Knights of the Chivalry that came down to Miami. And we had a wonderful class presentation about what the SCA is and the events and all the activities and what Gulf Wars is, what Penzik is. And, all the things and and having a classroom kind of conversation is it's completely different venue uh, opportunity to engage the crowd so they can ask direct questions it's very cool uh, let's see yeah you could talk about the SCA life your arts and crafts you can talk about arts and craft uh, uh, this art sci uh, competitions you can talk about bardic uh, what is heraldry uh, you can have classes on these things, you know, a whole class on on art side, a whole class on uh, performing arts or what is heraldry? You know, there are so many things to heraldry with name, what heraldry with names, creating a device, uh, voice heraldry. There's a lot to talk about just with heraldry. And if, you know, when, and if you're at a super con, hey, the idea of costuming is kind of a big deal, you know, and some people really get into the idea of, you know, how do you make garb that, that it like-minded people where they're like, where you call it cosplay and, and garb making, hmm, they're, they're like cousins, you know? Long live the king, long live the queen. If the king and queen are able to come, how cool is that? What if, you know, if they come, you, you, if they're willing to hold a court right there at your, at your, your demo. How uh, do you request that from the crown? Well, What's you, the legal procedures to request if they're even able? Well, the king and queen has their shatter, shatter lane. And that's their go-to person uh, if you want to communicate uh, direct, you know, through the Shatter Lane to the King and Queen. That's that's one. That's the main way. Uh, uh, so, uh, is there Shatter Lane's going to be listed in the Tailwind? No, it's going to be. It's on our super. It's on on the Kingdom website under the Crown. Uh, the King and Queen have a Shatter Lane, and the, if there's a Prince and Princess, they're going to have a Shatter Lane as well. So they're 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 the they're the go-to person to communicate to the crown. Otherwise, okay. they the, the king and queen would be barraged by <laughs> the whole kingdom. So they're they're like the filter. So they're very useful. But at so if the king and queen are willing to hold a court, they can give awards to to right there for for our SCA populace and 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 the whole crowd can witness this magnificent moment of somebody getting an award of arms or or an award for their services or an award for their chivalry or you know but again showmanship is a thing. And so making it a big, or they may actually call certain populace forward to, you know, swear allegiance to the, to the crown, you know, or, you know, you can make, you can do all kinds of things. Just be creative and, you know, and see what, but it, but you, again, you got to request it and see what the crown is willing and able to do uh, under the circumstances. That will be done this week. Uh, so now let's say that the event is over and winding down and these, this is the stuff of, you know, what do we do now? Um, I, the, the SCA rule number seven, that's not actually a number. I just picked that out of my hat, <laughs> but it is a rule that we follow. Leave the event cleaner than it was when we came, you know, don't leave trash behind. Make sure you can that you post a demo on YouTube. What about the other social media platforms? The, you certainly can. Uh, oh, you know, we we that's that's what the media. You know, you have you have a social media person in your group. You know, there's no reason you can't put moments of your your demo as you're doing it. You know, up on TikTok or you know or. or or I, I'm an old guy, so I. I well, I'm, they're I'm, they're I'm, publicizing I, I, it. Their media media 
social yeah. blasting it. The library is going to um what's the word I'm looking for? They're gonna advertise. Yes, but they're doing it on multiple platforms. And I sent them the proper SCA form of the language that they had to use. Mm -hmm. I, I did do I did that part already. Well done. Well done. So I got that part done. So before you leave, always visit with the venue organizers. You know, you did want them, your your this is the, the event is over. Oh, You've packed up your stuff. You're about to leave. But before you leave, you want to thank them for the opportunity. You want to engage them. Remember, this is a relationship you're building with this venue. You want to have it again and again. You know, if if they're willing to allow you to come back, you, you want to just make sure you maintain that connection. So before you leave, make sure you engage the organizers and talk to them how wonderful it was. Everybody had so much fun. Thank you for letting us be here. You know, all, all the diplomatic things you want to say. Um, consider having a post uh, 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 event dinner. You know, if if your team worked their ass off, you know, maybe you can go to Chili's or, you know, go out, go out someplace to celebrate, uh, you know, your demo. It's just it's not required, but, it, you know, it's a nice denouement, a nice way to wrap it up, you know, so we can celebrate a job well done. Always send uh, event organizers a thank you email. You, if you have pictures that your uh, your your team has taken or videos of the demo, you might send them uh, examples of the best pictures and the best videos because they might want to use that in their newsletters. Uh, you may post the videos and demos on YouTube and post it in the kingdom on Facebook. Uh, gets people excited. It get, lets people know what you're up to and uh, it encourages other and inspires other people to do the same in their areas. Uh, your Chatterline officer or, or, any, or other designee, now we're talking about the demo book. The demo book is, is so important because the point of the whole demo is to add to our numbers. And so now the event is over, what do you do with that demo book? Well, the Chatter Lane officer, if you have a Chatter Lane, if you don't, somebody will be assigned to go through that demo book and, and, and see where are these people, where are these people from? You know, you might have to separate the pages. You might have people, if we're in Florida, I'm in Miami, maybe probably 80% of them will be from South Florida, you know, but we might get some people from other parts of the state that have made, made the trip down. You might get some people from other kingdoms. And so you need to share that information with them. You know, so if I'm in Miami, but I had somebody from Tallahassee, I'm going to reach out to Tata, Tallahassee and say, hey, this person came to my demo. This is their information. If a person came from uh, Orlando, I'm calling Orlando's Cheddar Lane. Hey, let me email you this information. This person's in your area. They want to engage the SCA. You know, that this is this is due diligence. It's what we need to do. Share that knowledge with anybody that can follow up with that interested party. And then we need to, hey, we need to call these people and invite them to our activities. You know, if you're having a fighter practice, they want to go to a fighter practice, hey, connect them to the marshals. Hey, call them, let them know where the fighter practice is. The marshals will reach out to them. If you're going to have, if they want to do uh, 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 garb making, costuming, and you have a, uh, a night where you do that, you know, in your shire, get them to reach out. You know, uh, I would recommend making three efforts, three tries. Uh, you might, and I, I go as far as texting. You know, if I can't reach a person by calling them, I might text them and say, hey, we met at this, we met at this demo at the library. We met at this demo at the Supercon. I wanted to tell you about who we are and help you connect. You know, we got to reach out to them. And, uh, and, and, and that's how we engage. That's, this is the follow-up. And in your next officers meeting, after the demo, 
These are three really, really helpful questions to ask. What went well? What did we do that worked? And acknowledge that. These are the best practices. What did not go well? What what are some things that didn't go well? You know, it, the elevator wasn't wasn't was on lockdown. We couldn't get into it. Or uh, the schedule was different from what we originally arranged. Or the the tables were in a bad place. Or the tables were far away from the fighting area. You know, these are things that you know, or people didn't show up, or that were expected. Stuff happens. You know, and so being able to acknowledge it and discuss it and then troubleshoot. What should we do differently next time? And this is how we improve. This is how we all improve in life by asking these simple questions. What works? What doesn't work? And how can we fix it so it doesn't happen again? <clears throat> so there's some further guidance out there uh, that you can reach out to the kingdom shatter lane of your kingdom. Uh, you should uh, uh, keep track of the number uh, of visitors. This is an email. This is what we do in Trimaris. After an event, we send an email to the Kingdom Chatter Lane about the event and what happened. How many, how many guests signed our book? How many volunteers uh, participated? Identify the most helpful volunteers. You know, People deserve credit for the work that they do. Identify any uh, any follow-up plans that you have to engage those, those guests. And if you need help, just ask the Kingdom of Shatter Lane. They'll help you. Uh, the, and oops. And there's this is a website. Sorry for the typo. Uh, this is a this is a website to help you um, I connect the demos and give you some further guidelines. Question. Yep. Um, I've only been on Discord once, like when I was playing with you during 2020. Mm -hmm. So I haven't been on since then. I don't know how to do Discord Trimeris thing. Mm -hmm. Help, please. I've never used Discord in a demo. Um, uh, I'd be interested to see if anybody here has. I'll chime in. <clears throat> so most young people don't use Facebook anymore and Discord is way more effective. Um, it's basically just a chat platform, um, but it's really well organized and everybody uses it, especially gamers. Um, so I sent you that QR code. It'll take you right to the um our discord page and inside of it it's got all kinds of different channels and places to communicate and then we have discord moderators that will help people find the right spots okay i saved it wonder if i can click on it i'll add that uh my shire has used uh discord for uh class that we we broadcast over our channel and it was pretty well received so it that's something you guys might want to consider very cool so what i shared right now uh is a one page summary uh of the presentation i just gave um it's kind of the cliff notes one page cliff notes uh, I'm trying to, it looks like I can't share uh, the PowerPoint. Maybe it's too big. Um, but again, uh, I'll share my contact information. If you want to email me, I can certainly email you the PowerPoint. Uh, my, again, my uh, email is richard.sullivan, S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N, number two, at VA. Dot G O V. That's Richard Sullivan. V A dot what? Richard dot Sullivan number two at V A dot G O V. 
And uh, I could certainly send you the PowerPoints uh, by email. My phone number, if you wish to talk or if you have any questions about anything I, that might come up, uh, my number is 786-385-5993. Uh, you should, the things I posted in the chat, uh, the cliff notes of the presentation, I posted the, uh, pay, the demo book page. Um, let me see if I can share that show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, sh I can show that real quick. Let's see here. Share screen demo book. So you see this is got it's got the same thing three times. Right? So that's all you, all you got to do is photocopy it and put it in a book. And then And I, I have more than one book around the library for people outside and inside. Yeah, and 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 you can have more than you can do whatever you want to do as long as you got the book and you can keep track of them so you can you know collect them at the end of the event. Um, let's see here. And the uh, demo policy is from the uh, SCA uh, 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 website that is in the chat. So those are things available um, that are already in the chat. You just got to scroll back. And There's a person asking if you could please share that file again. Okay. What in, um, in the chat. All righty. I'll share the uh, demo policy first because we got to follow the rules and the demo book page. There you go. So and just because I'm in, I'm I'm in the thing, and that is the cliff notes of our presentation today. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Too many. Talk later. <laughs> now I feel like overload. <laughs> well, now, but now you, now at least you have, you know, the questions to ask. You know, you, I hope this has given some orientation. You don't have to do things the way I'm. You know, you, you have to do the, you know, follow the rules of the SCA and the guidelines that are presented by the SCA, certainly. Um, but generally speaking, you know, you make your demo yours. It's going to be it's going to be unique depending on the venue you're in, you know, and and the people that are involved. Every demo is going to be different because your volunteers are going to be different and they're going to bring their own thing. I was a venue host before I was a member. The SCA is an ideal guest because of the event leads are trained and prepared for attending classes. That is, that's very true. And, uh, you know, if you have an opportunity to share all the different classes, that's really cool. Katie says, uh, a tip for demo leaders, quarantine or take extra precautions the week before the event. Uh, that's true. Uh, my very first demo, um, in other words, you want to, you want to, you don't want to get sick the day of the event, you know, so you might want to take care of yourself before an event, certainly take your vitamins, take, you know, you, you don't want any last minute disasters to come up. So that's really good advice and take care of yourself during the event, because especially if it's a large venue, like a super con. You know, you're talking a lot, you're breathing all this artificial air, and you're talking to a lot of people. After the event, I had the cruds, and it took me a week to get rid of them. So, <laughs> a lot of water, a lot of water. Yeah, yeah. If possible, appoint an understudy or deputy who can stand in mm -hmm. and, and, and the lead if you fall ill, or if you have to teach a class. So having a deputy, having a backup there to take charge is a good idea. Just pass that talking stick. Ideally, have the uh, have the event so well organized that the demo could continue even if you weren't there, theoretically. So yeah, I mean, if you have the, the schedule, you've got everybody prearranged, 
you got people coming to your, your volunteers have done demos before. It really runs itself once you get going, you know. Can I, I borrow a, a deputy from another place <laughs> since I don't have a backup deputy? Because we don't have enough people? Absolutely. Because we're all one. It doesn't matter where they come from. Like I told you, we had we had uh, Miklos and his family and his household came down from Tallahassee all the way down to Miami. Yeah. Okay. You know, and so and there, you know, the you know the, a lot of uh, peerages are you know are willing to step in and support. You know, but again, you want to have these things figured out before the event. No last minute things. Have I missed any? But any other notes? Well, folks, it went a lot longer than I expected, but it was. It, I hope I give you some orientation, and uh, oh, I learned a lot. I hope that you can take this, use this in your own kingdoms. Uh, we have people from all over the known world here, and I'm very happy and excited. I think I saw up to nine, 19 participants at one point tonight. Uh, this is recorded, and so I thank you for allowing me to share uh, my experience with you. It's an exciting opportunity, and demos are exciting, and I hope you have fun with them. Thank you, Guillermo. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guillermo. Wonderful... Yeah, thank you for doing this. Have a wonderful night, folks. And uh, I will be posting this on YouTube so people, other people can share that couldn't make it. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> Good night, y'all. Good night. Good night.